Okay, so we're back now with slide six and we're looking at elastic arteries. And these are arteries that are very, very near the heart. So if you look at a diagram and you see something like this, then we're talking about arteries that are really close up in here to the heart, brachial arteries and things like this in the arms. Um, <clears throat> and some of the, the ones close here to the inferior part of the heart is what we're referring to there. Um, elastic arteries are thought to be very tough. They're near the heart. They do have all three tunics and they are supposed to withstand great blood pressure fluctuations. So maybe a little tougher because they're closer to the heart. Going into slide seven, there's a difference between muscular arteries and the elastic ones that we were just looking at. The muscular arteries are thought to be more distal or away from the body. So if you look at this diagram again, then any of the arteries down here, like in the legs or way out here in the limbs or even the upper thighs that are away from the body would be considered <clears throat> to be the muscular arteries because they're more distal away from. And they deliver blood to all the body organs. And then we have a type of artery that's a little bit smaller called an arterial. And it's believed to be the smallest of all the arteries. Now don't confuse this with capillaries. They're the smallest of all blood vessels. But arterioles are like small arteries. Oles on the end means very small. And these lead to what we call capillary beds. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> Then we have the smallest of all blood vessels. So this is much smaller than capillaries. So these are like so small that only one red blood cell, that's RBC, can pass through at a time. So super, super small. You don't have to worry about this uh, bullet here, the second bullet. We're not gonna study those three different types of capillaries. Just know that these are the smallest vessels in the body and only one RBC can go through at a time. Speaking of capillaries, this is kind of a tangled up bunch of them. This is what they look like on slide nine. You can see a arterial, a very small artery, and a venule. And so these run up and down the body, these main vessels, and this runs across different structures. Let's say that this is the palm of your hand, for example, and you would have an arterial in the palm of your hand, a venule, which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute as the smallest type of vein, and then these branch off into really small capillaries and they form a tangled up mass called a capillary bed. And so what happens is um, when you have deoxygenated blood represented here in blue, it'll come in and the deoxygenated blood has to be um, replaced with oxygenated blood. So oxygenated blood's coming from the heart. It comes into the capillary beds and it kind of diffuses across these small capillaries into the venous flow of blood. Coming on into slide 10, uh, venules are the smallest type of uh, veins. And uh, you can see your fill-in words here. Um, they're formed when capillary beds unite, and they allow fluids and white blood cells to pass from the bloodstream to tissues. And um, they only have two layers of smooth muscle. And that's where we're gonna end this particular clip. Stay tuned for more slides.